Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, moni muli wanji, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. And iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Uh, we're all about helping families grow closer together through reading. Please subscribe to the show wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Aaron Francis. He is going to be sharing with us uh, news about his Daisy Maze Daydream Parade, which is published as an audiobook. Before we invite Aaron in, we do want to invite you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Be sure to sign up for our blog, get some great information. We tell you what's coming up, we tell you what you might have missed, along with some great family fun. You get it all at readingwithyourkids.com. You can also check out our Reading With Your Kids certified great read wall of fame. Could be the place where you find the next book to add to your family library. ReadingWithYourKids.com Joining us right now from the United Kingdom, he is the author of a great series of audiobooks for kids. Uh, the one we're going to start talking about today is Daisy May's Dream Daydream Parade. Please welcome to the show, Aaron Francis. Aaron, how are you? Hi, Jed Lee. I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm really excited. I'm I'm really excited for a lot of different reasons. Um, you've chosen to publish books exclusively at the moment as as audio books, and that's really different. You, I, I'm also excited to talk to you about Daisy Daisy Max Day Daydream Parade. I can't even say that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm interested. I'm fascinated with it because this is a book that starts at chapter zero. So why don't we start our conversation at Chapter Zero and and ask you to, to introduce us to this character in this book. Cool, yeah. Um, so Daisy May is a eight-year-old star and writer of her own TV show that broadcasts exclusively in her imagination. Um, <laughs> the, the idea behind um, the series was to... I guess it was based a little bit on how I used writing as I was kind of growing up a bit older than Daisy May. Um, it, it was very therapeutic for me. It, it was a great way for me to sort of uh, process my feelings writing and trying to understand and get perspective on things. And um, in, in the story with Daisy May's Daydream Parade, the idea is that in every in every episode that she writes, she uses it to kind of come to terms and understand something in her personal life that she's struggling with. But they're really great, fun, action-packed adventures, and very much like when you're a kid and you have that freedom to uh, make up stories and not be limited by kind of whether it's uh, real to life or not and the, the kind of characters you come up with in your mind. And they're just uh, they're really lovely great fun lots of uh humor involved and uh lots of action and yeah you can go anywhere with with uh your daydreams and um so daisy may so far has ended up in space and on a treasure island adventure which also goes under sea and uh in the next episode uh book i should say um it's a magical kingdom so uh, yeah it's a fun series to write yeah. I, I I love what you said that Daisy May is the um, writer and the star and the producer of her own television show that that uh, is broadcast exclusively in her mind. Um, I, I think a lot of us have that. I certainly rem remember having you know c creating that television show in my mind. Um, I, I wouldn't share that knowledge with anybody, um, hmm. but but I think. This is a wonderful way to let kids know it's okay to kind of have that running TV show in your mind and, and, and celebrate your imagination. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think um, like, like you, uh, I, I've done it myself as a, as a kid. I was always uh, kind of coming up with little 
make believe stories and I was writing kind of little comic books and stuff at the time as well. I think just there's a, there's an amazing creativity that comes when you're young. Um, mm. but as I said, through creativity, I think there's a therapeutic, uh, element that can come with it. And, uh, that's something I began to really understand and appreciate later in life. Yeah. It's interesting that you made the choice to publish these stories as exclusively as audiobooks, at least at this time. Talk a little bit about that, please, because we have lots of authors who listen to the show, and they're, you know, the the, the dilemma that I hear them kind of uh, weigh in their mind is: Do I publish this uh, through a traditional publishing house? Do I uh, go and, and, and try to publish this independently or go through a vanity press? There aren't many people who are, who are considering publishing as audiobooks. So can you t- walk us through that process and, and why you made that decision, please? Yeah, there's, there's a few different reasons. Um, so my background is in audio production. Um, I used to create radio series for the BBC for their, for their preschool um, channel, CBBS. Um, and I also work on audiobooks uh, for all kinds of genres, for adults and children uh, in my role at my company, uh, Audio Factory in the UK. So we we produce titles for um, publishers in the North America and the UK, as well as independent authors. Um, the great, the, I, I suppose, one of the things that you sometimes realise when you're trying to trying to um, shape the audio you're often very aware as a producer that the audio is the afterthought. So sometimes Mm -hmm. there are things where on the page it doesn't quite transition as well to audio and you have to obviously think of solutions and ways around that. Um, What I quite liked in terms of writing Daisy May's Daydream Parade and and some of my other books as well is that um, I was writing with audio in mind so I was able to have lots of fun with the narrator and um, think of things that where the narrator could sort of chip in and, and use sound in a way that obviously it, it wouldn't really work in in a book, and also with the characters to have a lot more fun and to be able to be a bit more expansive in writing. Thinking about how it would sound um, was a was a really exciting experience. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of the reason. Yeah, and y- you know. As you're, you just mentioned, you, you're writing and uh, you're, you're thinking about how it's going to sound. Uh, that's a, I think that's something that some authors forget about. Um, sad to say, I think it's something that that some authors who write rhyming books forget about. It, it's, it's you know because when I'm reading the rhyme, sometimes I'm like, boy, he didn't, he or she didn't read this aloud. <laughs> You know, cause it doesn't, there's not a meter. It does, it's, it doesn't line up like a, like a song. Um, I, you know, I've heard from, from a, a number of different authors who always suggest, you know, after you're finished writing a text, always read it to yourself. And it's a great way to edit and it's a great way to see how it's going to sound in, in somebody else's mind. But I love that you created these for the ear and for the child's ear. And as somebody who grew up, loving listening to stories um i can really appreciate you know the choice that you made i i've loved audio stories forever before there was this term of audiobook there were baseball games i would listen to baseball games with the transistor radio underneath my pillow snuck into my room underneath my pillow and listen all night long and it it, it was you know, was, uh, those broadcasters were painting these pictures, and you know, listening to th- listening to the game was such a different experience than watching it. And you know, then there were there were, was I think it was a CBS radio theater that I would listen to at night, at night mystery stories, um, uh, and then there were always these classic uh, rebroadcasts of, of radio radio shows that uh, you know. Uh, were broadcast in the 20s and the 30s before there was television. And um, so that was something I always loved. Um, and I, I love the fact that you've decided to release these stories as audiobooks. I think it's really cool. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think, as you say, uh, with audio, um, it allows you to... I, I, I think similarly, when, when people read, obviously, they're, they're painting the pictures in their mind, and, and audio is a, another way to allow you to do that. And um, so uh, I think it, it kind of together, it works quite well, the, the sort of way of, of hearing stories out loud. I think that's that's how they were designed originally. I think if you go back to years and years and years ago, you know, by campfires or whatever, I think the, the great storytellers would be there captivating an audience, uh, you know, speaking out loud. So, yeah, it feels very natural. If if somebody is listening to this and they're, uh, because you and I touched on it a, a little bit, obviously there there's a cost involved in, in recording an, an audio book. It's, you know, not something that you're going to record on your phone necessarily as you're walking down the street or driving in your car. But it's uh, as recording an audiobook and releasing it, you know, exclusively as an audiobook means that you, um, you know, you don't have have the necessity to to pay thousands, possibly, you know, uh, of dollars to have a book illustrated. Is was that something that was uh, figured into your your decision making? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, obviously I paid for illustrations for the covers um, because, you know, that's that's very important to sort of hook people in. I think the, the thing is, obviously, when, I, when I'm, as I was starting out with, with my writing, I, I wanted to try and get as many stories as I could out there. Um, I was able to produce audio um, fairly effectively because of my job. And... I think it allowed me to get more titles out. I've written four books so far and actually just sort of making that decision to go straight into audio, saving a bit of money on the illustration side, you know, not having to have um, images all throughout a book, uh, allowed me to sort of invest more in terms of getting a, a really good supportive editor on board and then also great narrators who could bring the stories to life. So it's quite a challenge uh, trying to put audio only out into the world but I think that in time uh, I'd like to think that more and more people will be accessing audio for, for children and um, I honestly think it's a, it's a great medium to to get involved with and to enjoy I think um, there's there's so many wonderful things you can do with it and I'd love to do more with my books as well in terms of uh, I'd like to re-release them at some point with more sound effects and music and everything going on, but obviously that's an extra layer of uh, production on, on top. But audio only was just a very good way to kind of get stories out into the world quickly, and um, yeah, it's been a really fun experience. Yeah, you know, I know all of us as as we're listening to this, we're all experiencing various uh, stages of of lockdown and safer at home. You know, we're we're not necessarily driving kids to soccer and baseball and dance and in in school we may be the kids may be learning virtually when this is published but at some point life is going to return and at some point we're going to be back where mom and dad are the uber drivers for their kids and they're spending you know a typical trip to to the school or to the dance studio or the baseball field i think is probably around 15 20 minutes to 30 minutes and what a great way to spend that time to to um, parent and child immerse into the listening of an audiobook, uh, something that they that they can talk about, uh, something um, that that can m- bring a laugh, a smile to their face, help them grow closer together, as opposed to the parent driving and the kid on a device and some music that may or not have questionable values mm-hmm. playing in the background. Yeah, totally. I think um, it, was, it was a lovely review I had early on on one of my books was that um, it, it, the, the the mother who was writing the review said that it was a great moment for her to listen to the audio books with her children and it allowed them to enjoy it together. I always try to write with the parents in mind as well. I, I like to sort of make little jokes and uh, have a lot of fun and kind of silliness within the stories. Um but yeah, they, she, the the reviewer was very kind in saying that, that afterwards it just allowed them to open up discussion and talk about things. And I think the the thing uh, I, I 
myself, I was a, I grew up with an eye problem and I was quite a reluctant reader as a child. And um, audio really allowed me to get into reading a lot later in life, like in my late teens and early 20s. And, and as a result, I regretted not reading um, so much as a kid. Um, obviously, there are going to be children out there, reluctant readers who struggle with reading, but also parents as well who maybe don't have the confidence to actually sort of sit down with their children and to read a book out loud and then to to really be able to kind of discuss it. So I think audio... It makes it makes stories accessible to to people maybe who don't quite have that sort of natural ability to really take something off the page and comprehend it and um, you know feel that sense of ownership and and to enjoy books. So I think anything that kind of allows you to reach a new audience is um, yeah it's, it should be valued. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things, I know I've shared this on the podcast, my wife is a teacher here in the Boston Public Schools. Her best friend is a, uh, a school principal, and I remember sitting down with them one night and just saying, hey, how can, what can we do to, to reach out to parents in, in, in your schools, and, and both of them worked in inner city schools? How can we help inspire those parents to read more with their kids? And the first thing that both of them said was, "Gently, you have no idea how many of our parents can't read. Well, yeah, you have yeah. no idea how many of our parents can't read in English. And then on top of that, how many parents just who can read are just struggling to read and they don't have that confidence. And, and I think that audiobooks are a, a great way for for families to, that are in that situation to still uh, you know um, experience the benefits of reading together even even though you know that the parent isn't isn't a strong reader themselves 100% yeah i completely agree yeah uh, it, it's uh, you know you know i feel for, for my if i just look at my personal experience um, as I, as i say i regret in, in later in life that some of these amazing stories that were out there and that, that people were able to talk about and to, to learn from and to, to enjoy. And I was never a part of that world. And, um, I wanted to be and, and audio allowed me to be. And um, I'd like to think that a lot of parents and children will, um, use audio for years to come to access, uh, reading. Um, if, you know, picking up a book and reading off the page isn't, isn't quite working for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's been some some really uh, interesting kind of statistics and facts uh, are coming from um, sort of various reports and surveys and research around the the benefits of, of audio and um, you know it does it is proven to sort of uh, improve skills in terms of uh, sort of language acquisition vocabulary pronunciations kind of the sort of you're still feeling a lot of the same benefits from listening to an audio book um mm-hmm. and uh you know you know i feel that maybe at some point perhaps there was a stigma attached to it maybe in the uk more so than in the us but but now i feel that um yeah those boundaries are, are sort of being put to one side and you know people are listening to books and really feeling the same benefits and yeah as i said anything that can kind of make it make stories more accessible um is wonderful yeah 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 i i know um you, you know it's great that you're creating these stories for for younger kids i think audiobooks you know reading aloud there's a lot of parents a lot of a lot of kids they they feel awkward um, you know, we we strongly I- I encourage families to continue reading with their kids as they become independent readers, as they get older. Reading with uh, and, and co-reading with your teenagers is such a valuable experience. And uh, but that might feel uncomfortable to to sit down and and to read the same book. You're not going at the same pace, and it might feel real uncomfortable to read aloud with your teenagers. But sitting down and listening to an audiobook, I, and again, during those moments that you're in together anyways, you're, you, 
everybody listening to this is spending a certain amount of time with their kids in an automobile, in some kind of vehicle, going to or fro. And to, to, to spend that time listening to an audio book, um, even if it wasn't meant for kids, there's lots of uh, uh, audio books out there that uh, you know might have been written for an adult, but it's you know they, they they'd be great reads or great listens for you know your your high schoolers to experience with you, even some of your older middle school kids to listen to. So I really encourage parents to investigate. Um, be, be, Aaron, before we go any further, I, I just want to if there's an author out there that's listening and you know they. Maybe they were on, uh, you know, in the theater group when they were younger, and they're thinking, "Wow, I, I might want to have a, a go at this audio book uh, creation." What kind of tips? Where should where should they start? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, first and foremost, it's uh, it's important to sort of do a little bit of research and, and have a look around. Um, I think the, perhaps one of the most accessible ways is, is through ACX, which is an Amazon-owned platform. And uh, it's a platform that allows a rights holder for a book, so an author, to put their project up onto uh, the website and have it open for auditions for um, narrators to kind of pitch to narrate the book. And they you can obviously set a budget, and there's also – various kind of uh, options in terms of royalty shares, especially if, if you haven't kind of got a lot of finance there ready for you. I think that that's a, a good thing to explore. Um, I think my company, Audio Factory, we have a lot of authors from from the States who, who get in touch and we work on their productions. And there are obviously independent studios out there that, that will do that. But um, I think it's just a case of, uh, trying to dip your toe in and, and have a look and try and sort of hear um, some auditions and put some feelers out to, to some companies and get a bit of an idea. But I, I feel that in the in the states, you know, audio books has been ingrained in in the culture for years and years and years, and um, with you know the 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 way that it always blows my mind actually when I think of uh, life in the states and um, some of the commutes you must have between places. You can drive from like one part of England in the south to the north in like six hours, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of in in the states the scale blows my mind. But um, I remember I think I can't remember what film it was. Um, uh, but the, you know, I've seen so many films and TV shows in America where families are sort of there listening to audio books in cars and stuff. It's uh, yeah, fully ingrained in the culture, and there's definitely an, an appetite for it and an audience. So um, yeah, I think if authors are out there and interested in, in giving it a go, I would do a little bit of research. I think ACX is a good starting point, but um, Find Away Voices is another platform that that may allow you know, authors to kind of work with narrators, but to have a little bit more mediation from someone in, in, the, in the middle to kind of help the process along. Wow. You know, you mentioned the scale of, of the United States. Uh, we, we had an, um, an international student with us, and, and she decided to come out on a three-week tour with my daughter. And um, I was performing at schools throughout the southern part of the United States. So we started in Boston and this Italian, uh, young Italian um, student hopped in the car with us. And I think it was day 10 or 11. And, and we, we had gotten down to um, uh, ten, in Nashville, Tennessee, or, or Alabama. I forget which it was. But I know she just turned and said, this is incredible. We already would have driven through the whole of Europe twice. <laughs> And we're still just a third of, of the United States. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember um, I flew from, from London to New York, and it was, uh, I think it was a six-hour flight, maybe mm-hmm. just over. And then I remember flying from New York then to San Francisco, and the flight's like the same thing. <laughs> you just <laughs> kind of, kind of you just, you struggle to get your mind around it sometimes. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's fantastic. It it is. It's a big, beautiful country, and we're all part of a big, beautiful world. And 
one of the things that makes it beautiful is the fact that we can listen to stories and, and read stories with our kids and listen to stories with our kids. And, of course, some of those stories are, uh, you know, one of the stories we encourage families to check out is Daisy May's Dream Day Parade. Uh, Aaron, where can folks go to find out more about your audio books and find out more about you? Yeah, um, so um, I my I publish under um, a name called Wombat and Wombat and Jones, uh, and there's also another series alongside Daisy May's Daydream Parade called Wombat and Jones. Um, so that's at wombatandjones.com. Um, but uh, the books are available on a, a lot of uh, online retailers. Um, they're available on Audible. Libro FM are a, a fantastic, fantastic um, retailer that you can buy a, an audio book and you can do it in association with your local bookstore and so that that bookstore receives some of the funds. So in the States, I mean, if, if, if you are kind enough to, to have a look at, at the audio books and, and feel that you want to give them a go, then I would love if, if Libra FM and your local bookstore uh, were, were able to receive some of the funds. But yeah, at onebattonjones.com, there's links to several retailers and hopefully the, the, the right one for you will, will be there. That's awesome. We've had a great time speaking to the, to the author of Daisy May's Dream Day Parade and so many other audiobooks, Aaron Francis. Aaron, thanks so much for taking time to be with us today. No worries. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guests will be Matt Eventoff and Thomas Ray Garcia. They will be here to celebrate their really important book, Speechless, a, a great tool to help kids feel more comfortable expressing themselves in public really is a fantastic episode. You don't want to miss it. If you are an author of a great children's book, we would love to have you as a guest on the podcast. Being a guest, it's fun. It's easy. It's free. And it gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here tab at the top of the page. Scroll on down where you find Be It A Guest. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest, Aaron Francis. Be sure to check out Daisy May's Daydream Parade. I also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Alejandra Darty. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. But most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.